Alright, so when working with strobe, there are a lot of things to consider. Firstly, there are so many different types of lights out there. There are different makes, models, different wattages. It's finding the right light for you. But ultimately, what you want is to create beautiful, big, soft light. So I've got a, what have I got here? An Elenchrom RX1 light. So this is, I think, maximum outage at 100 watts and it can come down to its lowest output at six watts. So this is gonna create beautiful soft light. This particular light is gonna also allow me to shoot wide open at 2.8. And as a baby photographer, and I know many other baby photographers like to shoot wide open to get that beautiful soft depth of field, this kind of light is perfect for this scenario. However, there are many other lights out there that you can still achieve the same results. I'm gonna take you through a few different scenarios here and we're gonna take some bad shots and I'm gonna work my way to getting it right and showing you the difference between all those different placements of light, directions of light, and the angle of that light, which is most important in terms of drawing your eye into the subject, which is the baby's face, and lighting it. Not the background, not the foreground, and not beside it. We want to get that light falling perfectly across that baby's face so it is the main standout point of every single photograph. So you can see what I've got here is the light set up very straight towards my posing bag. So this means that the amount of light, I probably should turn this way so you can see a little better, is that better? <laughs> that means that the amount of light that's coming out is basically just going to burst out over the posing bag. And this is the thing, when you're working with strobe, it is a burst of light. So you want to be able to control that burst of light to where it's going to go. Can be a little tricky if you've never used strobe before. Um, I don't want a burst of light coming out and going straight across at the top of the baby there. I know what's going to happen is that the light's going to come in, it's going to light the background, it's going to light the foreground, it's going to light the side of my baby, then spilling across the back here, lighting that wrap, and um, lighting a lot of other areas that I don't want to be lit. And that baby is so close to that light source. For me to get that baby on a 45 degree angle towards the light, for me to get in there to get that right camera angle, I'm going to be pushing up against that light. It is not an ideal scenario, especially when you're working with someone's baby and they're sitting in the studio watching. You want to create a beautiful open space and invite your families in to watch and, and be a part of this experience. I think for me that's probably the most exciting part, seeing the look on their faces when they get to watch what's actually happening. And I'm not hiding behind a great big light. So, We'll bring that baby back around. Some of the things that I've noticed when I see people working with artificial light is just how close they bring that light source into the posing bag and how straight it is. Light is not meant to be straight. Light is meant to come from above. When we think about natural light, that's exactly where it comes from, the sky above us. And we want to create a beautiful filtered light. So here our light is actually shooting into an umbrella and then it's bouncing back out and it's being filtered by, this, by a soft box um, across the, the posing bag here. Now, if I take a shot of this so you can see what I'm talking about, we'll be able to have a look and start to compare some of the differences. Alrighty. So I'm going to shoot this. I've got my ISO at 100. I've got my aperture at 2.8 because I want to shoot this wide open. And I've got my shutter speed set to 200. Now, as per my camera's manual, that is the optimum, or well, I suppose the most desired shutter speed, the perfect shutter speed for syncing with flash. If I shoot this with a much faster shutter speed, I'm going to get that black bar across the bottom. And for those of you that know what I'm talking about, it's not nice. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. We'll take a shot at 200, 200th of a second. Oh, 
You can see we've got all of that light filling the posing bag, covering across the baby. I'm even overexposing some of those highlights that you can see there in that histogram. Not desirable. So if I was to increase my shutter speed, going back to that, and let's bring it up to say five, well actually, actually let's just take it up to 400. So 400th of a second, you're going to see a lovely black bar come across the bottom of the screen there. And that's because that shutter speed is too fast for the amount of light that's coming out. And that means that I need to go back to 200th of a second. The only way that I can adjust the amount of light coming into my camera, change my exposure, is by adjusting my aperture and by adjusting the light itself. So you're going to see how I do that in just a second. But we'll bring that exposure back to 200 and we'll leave it there for a minute. So over here I've got my light set on 2. So you can see if we go back to the original photo that we captured, um, overexposing all of those details. I can turn the power of my light down and if I bring that down to say one. Let's take another shot. So I brought it down a whole stop. You'll see that histogram move. Now that might look like the perfect exposure, but for me what I can see is a lot of light falling across the back of that photograph into the background. I've got light onto my wrap and I've got a very bright area coming across the top of the baby's head. The elbow down here is also bright and that shoulder and ear. I don't want to light the side of the baby. I want to start to light that baby from around the front on more of a 45 degree angle. But I also don't want the full intensity of the light which is coming from the center of this softbox. I really want to soften it down and create beautiful, beautiful soft light and soften those shadows. You can start to see around the side of the baby's cheek and onto the shoulder on the left hand side just how dark those shadows are. And if you have a look at that histogram, you can see those shadows really starting to creep down towards the end of that histogram. Now there's not a lot of information there in those darker areas, but it is there. So if you want this to be nice and soft, you want to make sure that those shadows are nice and soft. So what we're going to do is adjust our light. I'm actually going to pull my posing bag back slightly. And I'm going to turn it on a bit more of an angle towards that light source. And you can see with the modeling light, what that does is just spreads that light more evenly across the other side of the face. It's going to start to light the other light eyelid and the cheek and spread some more light around onto this shoulder, which is exactly what I want to do. So I'm just going to lift the light slightly. So I kind of want to aim to have the bottom of the light somewhat relatively close to the height of the posing bag. And now as I adjust the angle of that light so it's coming down, okay there we go. I still don't want the full intensity of that light to come across my subject because it's still going to light all the way around the back of the baby. What I need to do is feather it. So what I want to do is turn that light source towards you. It's a little stiff. Turn it a bit more. So now less light is going to come across the background. Now I'm still quite close, but what I'm going to do is just bring that baby back further away. What's going to happen is the light is going to spill out from the edge of that softbox lighting my baby. Light is the most important tool to a photographer, which is why it's crucial that we understand it and know how to capture it.
Throughout these tutorials, I will demonstrate with natural, continuous and strobe lighting, teaching you how the size, shape and placement of light can impact the look and feel of every photo you take. Working with a single newborn through to a family of seven, you will see how I use the different types and styles of lighting to successfully capture the perfect exposure across multiple setups. Once you understand light and how to capture it, you will be able to take complete control over every setup and start creating the images that you desire.